Starting off, I'll delete the default scene and then add in a cube and make the first flap. Using loop cuts, I can delete the corners of the cube and then fill them in by using the F key. Next, go into the side view and make sure that the X direction on the gizmo is facing towards the right. Add in the circle and change the amount of vertices to the amount of flaps you want to have. For me, this will be 37. Rotate the circle 90 degrees along the x-axis, and then rotate it so that way the outermost edge is perpendicular to the x-axis. On the bottom vertice of this edge, shift S, cursor to selected. Then select our flap, and then selection to cursor. In edit mode, drag the flap down so that way it is right below the x-axis. By doing this, our flap now pivots around its edge rather than its center of mass. With the flap selected, shift-click the circle and then control p to parent it. Now our flap is connected to the circle. In the object properties, right-click the Y rotation and hit Add Driver. Now we can drag down a new window and open up the driver editor. With the Y Euler rotation selected, we can change the variable to A, the object to the circle we created, and then the type to Y rotation. For the expression, I'll use this online calculator that I'll link in the description. I'll change the number of flaps to 37 and then copy the code for the first flap. Paste the code into the expression box in Blender, and now, when you rotate the circle, your flap should be moving more mechanically accurate. To keep things more organized, I'll rename this flap to flap.001. Then I'll name the circle to control. Change the pivot point to the 3D cursor, shift D to duplicate your flap, and then rotate it by 9.73 degrees, or 360 degrees divided by the amount of flaps you intend to have. Now, replace the expression with the code on the website for Flap 2. You should now have two mechanically accurate flaps rotating with your circle. Repeat these steps for the remaining flaps. After you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Towards the front of the assembly, your flaps may be intersecting with each other a little bit like this. To fix this, we can go ahead and select all of the flaps. To make it easier on ourselves later, I'll make this into a collection called Flaps. I'll select all the objects in this collection, change the origin to individual origins, scale, double click X, and then scale along the X axis of each individual flap. Now our flaps no longer clip into each other. Next I'll add a cylinder to act as the axis of our display. I'll scale it to size, and then remove the ends of the cylinder. I'll add loop cuts to the cylinder, and then scale the ends with Alt-S to keep the geometry perpendicular with the cylinder. I'll change the shading from flat to smooth, and then parent the cylinder to the control. Now as we rotate the cylinder, the flap should also rotate. Rename the collection to splitflap.001, and the flaps collection to flaps.001. Drag the flaps collection into the splitflap collection, and now we can duplicate our collection and have as many segments as we need. Next, we'll add a custom shader to the split flap display. To do this, go to the shader editor, make a new shader, and name it Flaps. Add an image texture node and plug the output into the color node. I'll link the image I'm using down in the description. Next, go to the UV editing tab and change the shading option to Material Preview. With the first flap selected, right click on the collection and hit Select Objects. Then hit Ctrl L, Link Materials. We have just assigned each flap with the same material. Now, with the two front flaps selected, go into edit mode and select their front faces. Hit U, project from view, and then realign the UVs to match with the faces. Once you're happy with the placement, select the axis, rotate the display to the next flap, and then repeat the process. Repeat these steps until you have the entire display textured. Once you're done, your display should look something like this. Mine has 37 flaps to account for 26 letters, 0 through 9, and an empty space. You now have a display that you can tile as many times as you'd like to have an infinitely customizable display. Here I'm duplicating the display a couple times, and then adding an enclosure around it using the cube. First I'll scale the cube to fit over all the segments. Then I'll add loop cuts in between each segment. 
With the front faces of the enclosure selected, I'll use Ctrl E to extrude each individual face, and then scale them along their individual origins. Next, I delete these faces to create individual windows for each segment. I create a custom material for the enclosure, and then another one for each axis. To do this, I use the same material linking method I showed earlier. Now all that's left is to animate it, and you should have something like this. Bye.